welcome. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for uh, agreeing to talk with us. Today's a, an important day because we, we want to highlight and we want to talk about the, the history of the Recuerdas uh, Cesar Chavez movement. And all of you today have been uh, important in making uh, the mission of our, of our group happen. And I just want to touch base with you all and listen to what you have to say. So um, I'd like to uh, first welcome our guest, starting with uh, Mr. Chuy Martinez. Everybody, my name is Chuy <laughs> Martinez, and I am a proud member of the Recuerda Sister Chavez Committee, actually a proud co-founder uh, of the Recuerda Sister Chavez Committee. And as you know, we've been celebrating uh, his legacy as well as Dolores Huerta's uh, legacy for the last 27 years. Uh, and uh, it's very, very important to us to continue this. And I am uh, very, very honored to be among some of the most active and some of the uh, founders of the committee as well. So uh, I, I want to thank you. I, um, I, I want to thank you for, for this uh, introduction, and uh, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuy, and an honor to have you with us. Uh, next, I would like to introduce uh, our next guest, Pablo Trujillo. Uh, he's been a, a member of the Recuerda Cesar Chavez as well for, for a long time, uh, and one of the founding uh, members of this committee. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, like she was saying, that he and I and a few others, Eduardo and Isaura, were all founding members of the committee. We started in 1993, and our first project we did was the uh, the name change of the the uh, Chavez uh, Chavez, and that uh, it took a lot of work, but we got it done. And and it's, and it's it's kind of been growing ever since. At the beginning, we were bare bones. We hardly had, we had no, we never had any money. We, we had to just do whatever we could. But we kept going and kept going. And, and then uh, as the years went by, then Michael came along and he was one of our, one of the people that really uh, um, was on a strong financial footing. And for that, we thank you, Michael. Awesome. Well, that one. But it, it's been an honor to be part of this whole movement, the council, because I was, I was kind of a late starter with La Causa. I got involved through my union. Uh, I've been a member of my union, the machine union, uh, for uh, 41 years. And, uh, we, we started meeting, and we used to meet at, uh, at uh, Chicano Studies when Eduardo was a director. And, uh, and then we used to, I can't, I, can't, I can't even remember all the different places we, had, we met to have, or we organized our, our events, we were all over town. And then when, the, and then when they, when they, when they built the, the Hispanic Cultural Center, we said, you're out, you have a home now, and we've been there ever since. It's been great. Thanks, everyone. Well, well welcome. I know that uh, with, with all of our guests, uh, it's, it's been a, a long history of, of, persever of perseverance. And as you said, uh, also one of our guests uh, here is Michael Casaus, uh, also a, a, a long member of the committee and uh, he, he holds a lot of responsibility and he's pulled this, this team forward as well. Uh, so thank you, Michael, uh, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you. Uh, I also got my daughter and my grandkids involved for, for years. My, my granddaughter was involved from the time she was about seven years old when she went to college. But she would still come back for the, for the, for the day of the celebration. And she's still involved to this day. She's become a, I mean, a really active activist for Black Lives Matter and for and doing murals. She was going to school in the middle, and, and, and we're all real proud of her. Passing the torch down, uh, it goes to the family. So really proud to see uh, families just come together and, and stand up. Um, but thank you, uh, Pablo, and again, uh, welcome and welcome, Michael. If you if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thank you, Diego. Happy to be with everybody today. Michael Casaus. Um, I am a, a longtime member of the uh, Comité uh, for the past 15 years. Um, I've served various roles in the Comité, ranging from just a, a volunteer, um, is how I started, 
um, and later became um, a co-chair, um, treasurer, um, uh, secretary. I think I've served in, in, in every leadership role, um, but uh, it's a real pleasure to be with our founding members um, uh, today. So thank you again for having me. Welcome, welcome. And also we are welcoming uh, Yesaura Bernal and Eduardo, Eduardo Hernandez, uh, members of the committee for a long time. Welcome. Well, thank you very much. And it's a great idea that you're having of doing this history. Uh, basically, we uh, first had the idea when Cesar died. He had been in uh, Albuquerque at the Plumbers Hall on his birthday, March 31st, to talk about the wrath of grapes, the, the pesticides sprayed on the grapes. And then three weeks later, uh, he died on April 23rd. A uh, lot of us students and, uh, you know, we were members of, uh, or co-advisors of Mecha and La Raza Estudiantil were part of it. So we all got together at our house and did a memorial and did a little meditation in the garden with the, the fruit trees and the vegetable garden and remembering the farm workers. And that's when it started, basically. And uh, I don't know if you remember some of the names, Eduardo? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the students, uh, the Mecha students in those years were very activist. Not anymore. They changed their name to some other thing. I don't know about it, UNM, but nationwide they changed their name. They didn't like, they didn't like uh, Chicano. They didn't like the word Aslan. Uh, just like uh, National Council of La Raza, they changed their name also. Yeah, but anyway, uh, and the, Mech the Mechistas and La Raza Estudiantil. And La Raza Estudiantil, they were very, very much activists. Uh, when I went to UNM uh, as, a, as a professor in the linguistics department, uh, I remember Enrique Cardiel came to me very early in, in that first year that I was there and um, uh, asked if, uh, if we, uh, Isaura and I, could be chairs of the, uh, 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 not chairs, uh, advisors uh, for Mecha. Um, and, uh, uh, well, Raza Estudiantil didn't, didn't require advisors, but we became part of that through Enrique Cardiel. Uh, he, he was very instrumental in all of this. Um, and there were just a number of students. I remember Raul Candelaria, Steve Martinez, uh, Adriana Barboa. Who's now a uh, county supervisor. Yeah. Now. Uh, and, yeah. Paula Karen, Garcia, Karen, Kathy, and we don't uh, Kathy, know. I don't know if we Kathy, remember Kathy, all of them. Kathy Muniz, but there's a whole whole bunch of, them. and they all continued as part of Recuerda Cesar Chavez. They were all very active in that for several years. Uh, so and anyway, then, and then uh, city councilors Steve Arvizu and. Uh, no, Steve, Steve uh, Gallegos, Gallegos and Alan uh, Armijo, I'm getting them all. Uh, I, don't know, I, I, I don't know if they want us to go into that yet. Well, they named, they decided that they were going to rename Sunport uh, after Cesar Chavez, change the name to Cesar Chavez. So we all uh, talked to different organizations and uh, came, you know, I think 60 organizations came before the uh, city. city council meeting and three organizations came out against and the, the city council voted it down. So there uh, was a situation where Vicky Perea, the other Hispana mm -hmm. on the city council, uh, this proposed a statue of Cesar Chavez. And after that, that's when we really started to organize and, uh, I'm gonna turn it off, I don't know. And uh, have celebrations in different different places. I mean, that's when I think we ran into 
uh, John Thomas Wager, who's no longer with us, and Pablo Trujillo, and uh, I mean, the names are com not coming out to me because I'm. It's been a while. Yes. Meetings and and you know getting uh, celebrations in different places. The plumbers hall, the uh, postmaster, the post workers hall, all kinds of places. And then finally, uh, November. In November, we had the big party where Dolores Huerta came, a fundraiser mm -hmm. to to do the renaming of the of the street and the potential statue. So it's been going ever since, and Pablo and and uh, Michael and Chuy, all of those became a big part of it. And I think Chuy will remember all the names of the rest of them that have come in. Well, Benny Medina was very instrumental, and so was Lucille Cordova, who was for the, uh, Lucille spearheaded uh, the Yales para Chavez in the, in the public schools. Right. Uh, and she, um, and she collected a bunch of uh, keys from the, from the APS, remember? And then we stored all that on those 55 gallon barrels. Uh, still exist as a matter of fact uh, they're they're at a warehouse somewhere on Fourth Street. I feel really uh, privileged being in a group uh, of such dedicated uh, social activists uh, as a young mind it, it feels really rewarding being uh, seeing all your work transgressing and as you've told me and as, as I've learned in the few years that I've been involved <coughs> sorry um, the, the relationships that you have built and how you even said it on uh, Yisaura uh, the, the groups that you worked with eventually like you know they, they spread and they did other things and you guys have just been better in your community since uh, and that's what this is about that's a, this is what Recuerda Cesar Chavez has been about uh, the legacy of, uh, of Cesar Chavez and what uh, he fought for in his time and the fight that has been going on um, as uh, for this year uh, we, we celebrated the, the 27th annual uh, Cesar Chavez Day uh, but since because of the pandemic, because of everything that uh, went on, we weren't able to host our traditional uh, in-person events. Uh, and because of that, we wanted to uh, touch base with the community and present uh, a little bit of history from some of uh, our, our founding members and core members um, like you all. Um, so I think the first question that I want to ask you is, uh, can you give us a little history on how this committee got started? Uh, what your role was in it starting and how it's changed, the, how the celebration has changed from when you started it to where it is now. So I think, uh, can I start with uh, you, Yisaura, and Eduardo? Well, as Director of Chicano Studies. Well, uh, no, it was this, this, uh, this preceded my directorship at Chicano Studies because uh, oh, that's right. uh, I, I didn't go to Chicano Studies until 97. Cesar died in 93. Um, but when I went to Chicano Studies, then that's another story. But um, in 93, as Isaura said already, uh, Cesar on his birthday, March 31st, came to the uh, uh, pipe fitters, plumbers and pipe fitters hall. Um, and it got on Zuni. Um, you know, workers and union people. It was, uh, the hall was full that day, and um, uh, you know, he gave uh, a, a very powerful talk uh, about pesticides in particular. I mean, that he he was he had been talking about that for years and years and years, um, and uh, we uh, I had I had met Cesar on two or three occasions before then. But on that occasion, I, I, I went up and I, I bought a flag and I went up and asked him if he signed it. He did. We have it. We have it here. Oh, uh, I don't know if we can see uh, it. Uh, the, the signature is right there in the corner. Uh, you awesome. can't see it on the screen. But <laughs> this, this is that flag. Uh, and later, we got another one that uh, we had the lotus sign. But that was uh, a few years later. We have both of those with their signature. I'm not sure what we're going to do with those. Uh, maybe the committee would like to have them uh, uh, with uh, with um, 
those signatures on there. But in any case, um, getting back to the to the beginning, my my uh, my role on this uh was basically as as an activist not as a professor um i grew up as a farm worker and always and i was still in california before i went to new mexico i uh was was uh active in different ways in cesar's movement out here and uh so in, you know when i had the chance to to go uh, see him in Albuquerque, of course we did. We, uh, the, the Mechistas also brought him, uh, brought him uh, earlier, I can't remember the 1991. year. 1991. Yeah, 91. 91. 1991, yeah. Yeah, and he, he came, uh, um, and I remember the Mechistas all, all went out to the airport to greet him, and there's a picture in existence, I think we have a copy, uh, it's in the booklet, I think. Oh, you know, it's in the booklet. You guys Chewy, have that in the Chewy booklet. Has Chewy, Chewy has continued that booklet that was done very, very early on. Um, uh, uh, that was when when uh, when Chicano Studies got involved. When I got when I became the director, uh, I always believed that Chicano Studies should be involved in the community, and Chicano Studies programs all around the country, most of them, not all of them, they're, they're in their little house, you know, they get involved in with academics and stuff. You know, silent at la comunidad, they're not out there in the community like they ought to be. And I, I always felt that the Chicano Studies program ought to be out in the community. So that's how Chicano Studies got involved with Recuerda Cesar Chavez. Uh, uh, you know, until until I left, uh, I don't know if, if I know that Chicano Studies did not continue because they got somebody who wanted to rename Chicano Studies to Mexican American and Hispanic Studies or some crap like that. Uh, and um, uh, later on, when when Esta Colonia Irene came, and she changed that, uh, but that was several years later. I'm getting off the subject. That's why I asked how many words I had. <laughs> este, um, in any case, um, that that evening of his death was a very very emotional one for all of us, uh, the students, and me and Isaura, who was also a student. She, she uh, uh, enrolled in the doctorate program there in at UNM. Um, and other than me, they were all students at the, in the beginning at that, at that event where we had a candlelight vigil and where we did a little marching uh, around in our backyard. So we had a bunch of fruit trees back there and a vegetable garden that was getting started. And so we, we made that kind of a, uh, a substitute for, for the march that Cesar, really a critically important march that, that, that the farm workers did to Sacramento from Delano. And uh, uh, they were always marching. And so that's why we wanted to have a march. And every year after that, every year to the present, there's been a march. We used to, we used to march from the plumber's hall all the way, all the way downtown to wherever the event was going to take place either at at uh, city at city plaza or or at the um cultural center there on broadway no no the other one oh the south broadway yeah south broadway cultural oh, south center broadway. we we had it there a couple of times and then and uh, then we finally uh, uh, chewy chewy was the one who who really pushed the uh, National Hispanic Cultural Center to have us go there? Um, and of course, in those days, we didn't have any money, uh, so we couldn't we couldn't pay rent or anything like that. But so so it's it's been at the, at the Hispanic Cultural Center for I think it still is there. Is that yeah. true? I think it is. 
Um, yeah, sweet. In, in, in any case, um, uh, all the union people, oh, they, they just really flocked to the committee. Emil Shaw, Emil and Rose Shaw, and, and, and of course, Pablo and uh, uh, John Thomas Wager, and Danny, Danny, Danny Rivera was critically important. I can Come think on. of other names, Charles. Uh, oh, Charles Powell. Powell. He, he still also is really uh, yeah, He's still around. Oh, yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. And there were there were others who uh, later on they're both gone, unfortunately, and I can't. I the memory goes <laughs> with age. <laughs> getting, yeah, she's getting older. I, yeah. I don't see my mem <laughs> my memory is perfect. <laughs> I, I don't get old. <laughs> He's always been old. <laughs> Any, anyway, uh, so that's how it got started. We decided that first evening that we were going to continue it the following year. And I think that's when the, the union people, uh, Pablo and, and, and then Chewy too, um, we we knew Chewy uh, as as a community activist and of course as a great musician uh, and um, he was always there with his guitar and his voice um, urging us on and so entre todos we formed the committee uh, all of the people that I mentioned um, and it's been going you know and I just I just want to. Um, make a point. Uh, Michael has said he's been with the committee for about 15 years. But when Michael came on, uh, it, the committee really went forward. Michael, I, I just have to say this directly to you. You did uh, just a marvelous job with the committee, uh, raising funds and expanding its reach. And, you know, after we left, that's when the committee started doing bigger and bigger things. Uh, you know, the, um, the service, the day of service, we didn't have that before, um, and which continues to this day. Um, so anyway, uh, I'll back off. I know you have other questions and other people want to say things. I think you, you told us a, a great story and it's really cool to see that some of those things have stayed. But as you said, you, you, you guys started the, like the ball rolling and it's uh, it's grown, it, it, and it, I think it's only going to continue to grow as as we become more aware uh, of these things. Uh, as you said, the the day of service was was involved, um, so thank you for that. Uh, next, I would like to hear from uh, Mr. Pablo, uh, if you would like to tell us uh, your role in in the beginning of uh, the Recuerdos de Chavez Comité. Uh, uh, and the differences or the uh, what you've observed in the years uh, of you serving in this committee? Well, it's just a matter of, stay, of, of staying involved and, 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 and being there when, it, when you're needed to do whatever it whatever has to be done. And there's an old term in, in the living room uh, about a, a character called Jimmy Higgins. And he did everything and nobody else would do. And, uh, and we have, we've had plenty of Jimmy Higgins in the, in, over the years. We had uh, we had Kelly Burns, we had Rita Thompson, Danny Rivera. We've had a lot of people that just show up and do the work. And, and that's what it's all about, you know, because there's no glory. It's just all doing the work. And if we involve our kids and our grandkids, that just makes it reach them further. So all I can say is thanks to everyone that's been involved over the years. And, and let's, keep on, let's keep on moving ahead. Thank you, Pablo, uh, and thank you for well for continuing to serve uh, and for bringing your family along. Um, I know that like when I see you and, and your daughter, it, it looks really nice to have that family uh, unit in the committee. Um, so thank you. And next, I would like to hear from Chewy. Oof, I uh, we got so many stories to to tell. You know, just uh, from picking up from what Isaura and Eduardo were were saying. You know. There were so many, so many people involved at the beginning. Everything was volunteer. We, uh, along with Enrique Cartier and some other uh, people, we were in charge. I'm still kind of 
of working mostly on entertainment and getting people to speak and things like that. So we formed a little committee to for entertainment. In fact, as, uh, the, the, we used to have those, um, well, we had that party at, uh, at Eduardo and Isaura. So we, we played music. Uh, Enrique, uh, uh, Enrique Cardiel, uh, some of the people from, um, from the, um, from this uh, group, uh, Dare Owen Shane, uh, Ricardo Magallanes, you know, uh, you know, Mexico Presente was called mm -hmm. that, that group. Um, and we used to play a, a lot of music for the events. But some of us uh, were also working mostly uh, full time, even though in my capacity with the city, uh, you know, with me allocating little funds here and there for for bigger groups sometimes to to uh, to uh, showcase bigger groups um, uh, for for the um, for the event. But what I am very very uh, honored to have been part of was the uh, uh, starting and actually working on uh, along with Eduardo and Isaura and some uh, a lot of other folks uh, elected officials on the uh, state holiday. The state holiday, the recorded, not, not recorded, but Cesar Chavez state holiday was passed in 1996 by the legislature. All, both the uh, Senate and the House passed everything. All we needed was the signature of a, uh, uh, the governor. But because we had a, uh, a Republican governor, he wouldn't sign it. Uh, it was during Governor, uh, Johnson's uh, administration. So we waited for all that long until recently, which we already, we, we went and tried it again. But that, that one was a very significant uh, milestone on uh, that the committee, Eduardo Nisaura left as a legacy because it did pass. It was just the signature that was needed. This, all the legislators, uh, uh, both, like I said, uh, you know, it, uh, one, I think that the House was unanimous and, uh, and we needed like uh, three or four votes from the Republicans, but, but anyway, it passed. Uh, and uh, that was, that was, it was a really nice thing that I want to, uh, uh, you know, highlight. And from there on, of course, you know, we, we've been doing all this. We did it all over. I mean, I don't know if you, when you guys remember uh, Eduardo and Misauda, that we did it in in in, uh, in 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 Old Town at the museum. We did it one time at Civic Plaza. We we were all over at the uh, over at the, the um, Cesar Chavez Community Center. I mean, uh, and then later on at, at, in the South Valley. Uh, at, at the uh, what was it called? The uh, Raramuri from the Raramuri Center to to uh, the West Side Community Center. So we did it a couple, a few times. That's when there the um, Dolores Huerta wasn't called Dolores Huerta, but it was the Day of Service started. Started by the La Placita. Um, it's a it's a, a nonprofit organization there. But I mean, it's been such a Beautiful, beautiful journey, and but like I said, many people. One, one that comes to mind is Benny Medina, who was Benny Medina was the mayor of Corrales at one time. He was a, uh, he was from Taos, but he uh, he he was a he he ran as a politician. He had, he had been a uh, veteran, a Korean War veteran, Vietnam veteran, decorated. I mean. Benny was an amazing supporter, and um, and that's when Lucille, who used to be Eduardo's assistant at Chicano Studies, started the Chavez for Chavez. Remember that, Eduardo Nisara. The Chavez for Chavez was a project to collect enough keys from the public schools and, and well, the community in general to build a, a uh, statue of Cesar Chavez. And that's why it was called Chavez for Chavez. We collected 
thousands and thousands of keys. And, uh, but because of the problems with the metals not uh, mixing together, was uh, that the artist decided not to even touch it because it wasn't going to be possible. It needed to be one solid kind of metal. So that's why uh, the, the project was put on hold. And uh, we, we stored it all this uh, keys there at, um, at a warehouse or a, a, a yard that uh, Benny had on 4th Street. Because later on, our idea was to do a mural with those keys, uh, to do a, a mural of, uh, of the Monumento. And, um, and it was, uh, so that one was also put on hold. Like I said before, we didn't have, before Michael, we didn't have much direction, you know, because we were all uh, less minute things and whatever, whatever we could get, that's, that's how the event would, would take place. You know, sometimes we had amazing speakers and, uh, and guests and, uh, and other times it would be just a march, but it was always a celebration. Uh, one thing, though, I, I do want to um, point out that, you know, my background, my own background, I, um, I grew up in the fields. And when I was young, the reason I got involved in this, because when I was young, I spent some time in the, um, in the uh, Imperial uh, Valley and uh, all those places, uh, Coachella, you know. And, and when, when the, we were about to leave, California, which we left with, uh, there was a lieutenant uh, uh, for the United Farm Workers Union by the name Antonio Orenday, who was uh, Cesar's kind of right-hand man at the time. And so we, uh, we left because we had people, uh, uh, we had people in, in, in Texas that had promised some work to my, my parents. So uh, he went back to Texas, so we, we went behind. And he formed the United, I mean, the Texas Farm Workers Union, which was affiliated to the United Farm Workers Union. And then, uh, and then we um, worked with the, um, in West Texas, with the Chicanos um, Unidos Campesinos and all. So that was the whole, that, that was my background. And that's the reason that I have so much passion for this. Uh, I'm not new at this. I, uh, when I was young, I used to help uh, the um, RCAF, for example, to distribute some flyers. Uh, the RCAF was called the, the Royal Chicano Air Force, and they were all artists. Mm -hmm. Jose Montoya, who was from uh, New Mexico, by the way, from Escobosa, was the leader of that. And they used to go to the fields and and do, or sometimes at their shops, but they used to have a mimeograph machine. And that's how they used to do the flyers for the, for the union. And that's how I started. And then later on, I was introduced to Banda Calavera, which was Danny Valdez and Teatro Campesino. And, and from there on, you know, I, I, I did a lot of, uh, yeah, a, a lot of uh, intern kind of work, because I was, I was kind of young back then. Uh, and so, so that's why my, my passion for this committee uh, is so strong. Uh, it's not now for faith, for anything. It's just to continue the legacy of those people like uh, uh, Cesar Chavez and, and, and Dolores Huerta, but also people like Tesaura and Eduardo, Pablo, you know, all those people that, that were involved at the beginning and also, uh, my respects to the ones that came afterwards that got us going as up to what we are now, a well-organized uh, committee. And, and all this, uh, really, I, I, uh, I also want to thank Michael for that. Uh, because Michael was, uh, uh, when he came, I remember meeting him, and right away we started working together with... Uh, you know, with some programs and things like that. And then he, he uh, got involved with the Recuerda, uh, Sister Chavez Committee. And, and ever since, he, uh, he was well-organized.
you know, and uh, and actually it was uh, was the first time that we had a, a treasurer. We had, we had different committee uh, some, and some committee chairs and things like that. Because before it was, <laughs> yeah, before it was a, a, a whatever we could um, get done with whoever uh, will come and volunteer. But anyway, I think I already talked a little bit too much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it on back to you. Thank you, Chui. Uh, thank you for, for sharing. Um, and I think um, one of the things that you and, and, and Pablo said that, that was really important to me was uh, that there's no glory in what you guys have done is because of the passion that you have for, for your communities and for your people. And I think that shows. Uh, so thank you to, to all of you. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Mr. Michael Casals, if you would like to introduce uh, your role in the organization and what, what you've seen happen in your years here, um, please go ahead. Thank you, Diego. Um, <clears throat> such an honor to be here and um, reflect back on, on my involvement with this comité over the last 15 years. Um, I remember vividly um, I had just moved back to New Mexico uh, from being away at graduate school for about eight years. And um, this was in 2005. And I was attending an anti-war rally, actually. Um, there were protests against the Iraq war at that time. And I saw a UFW flag, um, the iconic red flag with the black eagle flying. And so um, I, I I immediately went up to see who was holding it, and it was Isauda. And um, we struck up a conversation, and I, um, <clears throat> what drew me to the flag was that my, my own grandparents were, um, um, came to um, the U.S. from Mexico as migrant farm workers. My mother and all my tios and tias um, um, were um, also migrant farm workers, and um, they're out Arizona and, and California. And um, uh, they always instilled in me the, um, <clears throat> the importance of education, but also getting involved in our community. And so I struck up a conversation with uh, Isauda, and um, she uh, invited me to the Cesar Chavez Day celebration that was kind of just around the corner. And so I remember we marched from one of the union halls to the Cesar Chavez Community Center. and. Um, and uh, it was there that um, it was a small, intimate event. Um, and I remember Chewy uh, playing and singing and emceeing that event and, and going up to him after, uh, after the event ended and expressing my appreciation and asked him how I could uh, lend my support and how I can get involved in next year's event. And so um, I... Uh, I, um, I did that and, um, and joined the Comité in, in 2006. Um, at that time, it was a fairly small committee of uh, just a few people, and, um, um, uh, but doing great and amazing things in bringing the community together to celebrate um, our hero, Cesar Chavez. And um, I had a, a history, a recent history in student organizing, so I was young and energetic and, and uh, was always thinking big or bigger. And, um, and so starting in, um, I think it was 2008, I became one of the co-chairs. And um, we, um, we began to formalize the committee a little bit more. We, we, um, we developed a mission statement and a vision statement. We began to raise money um, uh, to do the things um, that we had been hearing that we wanted to do. And, um, and while the, the original um, marchas and fiestas were, uh, were great and amazing, um, um, what I wanted to bring to the, to the community was um, bring more people um, and more attention, um, not only to Cesar, but also the issues facing our community. And um, so I think it was in 2008 that that we began to, to raise more money to be able to bring in um, bigger name speakers, uh, more prominent speakers and more prominent musical entertainment. 
Um, the idea there was that if, if we thought if we could bring in some more bigger name speakers and bands that we may actually draw in a crowd who may, for example, wanna, wanna listen to um, a particular band, maybe didn't know much about Cesar, um, but wanted to hear the band. And, and if we drew them in through music, that we might be able to um, engage them um, uh, on a whole host of issues. So over the years, we um, have just been so fortunate to host uh, really some of the heavyweights from the, uh, from the Chicano civil rights and farm worker movements, people like Liz Chavez Villarino, the daughter of Sar Chavez, um, uh, Carlos Pérez, the founder of Sin Fronteras Organizing Project, um, uh, Valdemar Velasquez, the founder of the Farm Labor Organizing Committee, um, uh, also people like Do Dr. Jose Angel Gutierrez um, with American, American Youth Organization and La Raza Unida. Um, and of course, we um, have been so fortunate to host as our keynote speaker and guest of honor, Dolores Huerta, our, our native daughter here in New Mexico, our hero, um, who's been uh, coming to our events. Um, I think it was five out of the last 10 years. Um, of course, we've also had local speakers talking about their work uh, in the community and, and also the most pressing issues from their perspectives. Um, as I mentioned before, we were also to, able to money to bring in um, uh, some additional inter entertainment. So we, we decided that um, uh, the marcha was so critical, as Eduardo described earlier, uh, to continue. Um, um, and so the marcha has always been part of, um, uh, of our festival. Um, but we did also wanted to, to make it um, um, also fun and family friendly. Um, and so we brought, in, uh, we brought in some local bands. Uh, Cultura Fuerte played for a number of years. Uh, either for free or maybe for a hundred bucks. Um, Enjoy, Reviva, Calle 66, Baracutanga, Mickey Cruz um, have all um, provided musical entertainment. And we've also brought in some um, really amazing national bands like Cava and Quetzal, Las Cafeteras, and uh, B-Side Players. And so I think the mix of these high profile civil rights speakers combined with higher, um, more prominently known bands, we've been able to grow this event from a, a relatively small intimate community celebration into what's often considered one of the premier cultural events uh, in Albuquerque, something that I'm proud of, but it, it, it's only because of the hard work of, of so many community members, volunteers dedicating their time over many months to organize this this celebration. Um, I'll also mention that um, we also wanted to begin to honor um, community leaders uh, with with an award to recognize their contributions and so I think it was in 2008 that we began to give out the Si Se Puede awards and we've been doing so um, ever since. And um, And lastly it was also in that year uh, 2008 that we began our day of service. Um, uh, several community volunteers um, thought it was great that we were marching in the streets and that we were celebrating our heroes um, and bringing people together. Um, but they also knew that, um, that Cesar gave um, our country and each of us um, a unique example to live our, our lives by. And he was he was really dedicated to serving his community. And so we wanted to instill that sense of community service in our young people. So we began the, the day of service, um, starting at a small community farm. Um, and it's been growing every year. Um, uh, we regularly have 300, 350 students coming to the historic Sanchez farm uh, in the South Valley of Albuquerque. Um, to uh, get their hands dirty, learn about agriculture and where their food comes from, learn about acequias, um, and also do some planting, um, planting of trees and cover crops and other garden vegetables. And so 
it's been a, a really amazing evolution of this, of the Recuerda Cesar Chavez committee. It's only because of the hard work that um, Isaura and Eduardo, um, Pablo and Chewy and so many other leaders um, started and that um, and many of them continue to this day to be active. Um, and uh, it's just been such a pleasure to uh, to do my part um, uh, in this celebration. Thank you, Michael. Um, I think it'd be uh, awesome to be able to have all the people that have contributed to this event over the years. Uh, I think there's like countless names that, that we couldn't include, but we know that this event has pulled the community uh, from all the all the work that you've all done uh, through the generations, and which kind of leads me to the, to, our, to our next segment which is talking about what it is that, that we've been doing throughout the years. Because although um, you have all served specific roles in the, in, in the Comité during your time, uh, the, the mission and the vision has always been to honor Cesar Chavez's legacy and to advocate for, for rights uh, for our farm workers. Uh, and I think that that's something that's remained and it, it's only evolved. Um, this year was an important year. Uh, due to the dedication of the uh, street, uh, sorry, <clears throat> to the street, Avenida Dolores Huerta, which connects uh, with uh, Avenida Cesar Chavez. Um, this was a, a big event and we're really, uh, we were really sorry that we weren't able to have that ceremony, but we'd still like to talk about what this means uh, for the movement and for the community uh, and why it is important to continue uh, like celebrating the legacy that Dolores Huerta uh, and Cesar Chavez left for us. So I think, uh, Chuy, would you like to start? Uh, well, I just wanted to point out that there's going to be a dedication on September 8th. September 8th is the uh, dedication of the uh, union of the Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez avenues the only ones in the country that come together. And, and a dedication is gonna be right, there, right at the National Hispanic Cultural Center on 8th, I mean, uh, 4th and Cesar Chavez. And, uh, the, you know, one thing that we do want to um, uh, say is that we are very uh, honored to have worked with the um, Las Mujeres uh, that spearheaded the Dolores Huerta Avenue, and uh, and we're able to, to get it done at a record time. Because I don't remember, I, I, I remember when we uh, working on the uh, Cesar Chavez Avenue, it took us a long time. And, um, and, and Las Mujeres were able to do it at a record time. Uh, uh, and, and there was uh, hardly any opposition to it. So we, we want to thank them for, uh, for have, including us uh, as, as to, to be a part of that. And I know that some of our members will be present for the um, dedication uh, on September 8th uh, uh, of this year. Awesome, thank you, Chewy. So uh, as Chewy was mentioning, this will be the first intersection in the country uh, named after two civil rights leaders. This is, of course, a, a, a big deal. And I'd like to hear from you of why, why it is important um, that this, this is going on uh, and why it is important to continue uh, remembering and honoring the legacy of the Dolores Huerta, Cesar Chavez, and the United Farm Workers Movement. Uh, so to start again, uh, can we hear from uh, Yisaira and Eduardo? Yes, I'd like to... Uh really point out that um, especially during this pandemic people talk about the central workers and uh, you know the postal service and the grocery shops and the uh, different services but nobody remembers to mention the farm workers mm -hmm. and the poultry and meat workers especially the farm workers uh, because you know they're they're totally ignored but without them there is no agriculture there is no food provided for our people and because many of these people are 
undocumented, they're ignored, but they are the neediest and the most essential workers of all. And, and the Congress and the president and all of all of all of the politicians, uh, they talk a good game, but these farm workers, at least here in California, the undocumented farm workers, who are the majority, don't get a dime. Even Governor Newsom uh, promised five hundred dollars. We don't know where that money it has that ever material if that ever happened, you know. Uh, so Isada is absolutely right. These uh, and, and these avenidas or this avenida, because there's now a joined uh, avenida, it's a single avenida, and it's really, really totally appropriate, um, more than appropriate, because Dolores was in every way equal in, in what she did for the farm workers to Cesar himself. They, they were, they were, um, a, a pair who are well known, uh, but her name always comes in second, and it shouldn't. She she was just as as, as everybody knows. She is the one who initiated the expression "si se puede," uh, uh, you know, which was uh, she was a strategist, too. and she was the strategist for for the farm workers. So. What you folks have done there in Albuquerque uh, to honor Dolores uh, by linking her avenida with that of Cesar, just, uh, just amazing. And I, I just want to go back and uh, say, Michael, um, uh, you know, you, you uh, as, as you said, you started. Uh, uh, with with the comité, uh, uh, well, I, I think you probably joined it. I think in 2006, but in seven and eight, and these were the years in particular six and seven that we were preparing to leave Albuquerque in New Mexico because I had retired. Uh, all, both of our families children, our grandchildren were out here in California. And so after our retirements, we decided to come back. We regretted that many, many times um, uh, for a lot of reasons, but uh, uh, not the least of which was all of the, the friends and colleagues that we had made in Albuquerque. And Chewy in particular, has kept in touch with us, and we appreciate that so much, Chewie. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to say something about what you mentioned. Uh, when, it, when it was decided to try to uh, uh, collect metal keys uh, 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 for a statue of Cesar. Oh, it was a woman yeah, was from a, Chihuahua. A woman from Chihuahua who that, mentioned that. They that. had done a statue of Pancho Villa by collecting keys yeah. and, and making and melting them to a statue. So and so we thought it was a good idea. And so we, we called it Yavis para Chavez. But uh, the thing that I wanted to mention, there was a, a, a couple of teachers. Uh, what was the name of that town? Estancia. Uh, it was out, uh, out east of Albuquerque, okay. about 100 miles or so. Uh, named Medine and Patsy Cordova. They were uh, sisters. They taught uh, units in their classes when the school board find out they were fired. Well, went out there though. Yeah. The Chavez yeah. committee went out there when, when they got fired to, yeah. to the city council yeah. to, to uh, support them and they they, they, still fired they, they, them. Still, they still fired them. Well, uh, they had gotten, before they got fired, they had gotten uh, the word about Yavis uh, para Chavez. And uh, they started collecting keys out there. In all the kids. That's all the, the kids and the, their parents and everybody out there. The well, means of educating them. Yeah. Just keep, keep well, they brought 
buckets, buckets of keys to one of the meetings. I, I don't, you thought I will remember. Well, it was to the November fundraiser, one the of the fundraiser. fundraiser. And they brought in. Yeah. A wheelbarrow. Wheel 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 Do you remember that story when they brought yeah. a wheelbarrow full of keys from yeah. one school? Yeah. yeah. So uh, they 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 uh, sued the district and they they won quite a bit of money. They eventually and won and yeah. retired in Albuquerque. They still live in Albuquerque. Nadine and Patsy Cordova. Uh, I just wanted to mention <laughs> their names. And another one who also was uh, another woman who. Was very involved in, or recuerdas Tessa Chavez was Catalina Muniz. And she's no longer with us, very sadly. But she was uh, actually uh, supported by SWAP to be, do this full time, to get signatures to change uh, the name of Stadium Boulevard to Cesar mm -hmm. Chavez. And she worked tirelessly with us to get that. And so she, we presented so many petitions that she was able to gather that the city council couldn't do anything else. But so so the it. Southwest Organizing Project uh, needs to be mentioned as having uh, very strongly supported uh, the uh, Recuerda Cesar Chavez and, and all of the events. And, and they put their money where, where, where their mouth was because uh, she, she worked for SWAP. And they paid her salary for several months each year to, to help us out, to organize. Uh, but Michael, uh, you, um, you know, this was just a little, uh, a, 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 a little tiny airplane uh, that, was, that was kind of coasting around the airport. I'm talking about the Cesar Chavez, uh, Recuerda Cesar Chavez, when you took over, that airplane took off. And let me tell you, you've done a tremendous job. And I just want to make sure that, that that is said and that you get the credit because that organization, uh, uh, because of um, the tireless effort and your vision was really, really critical. And, and I'll never forget that. And I'm very glad that I got to talk to you and that you found me. <laughs> not only that, me too. Not, only, not only that, but we also uh, started the tradition of celebrating at Michael's house after the march And it's, I tell you, <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, celebration because we, you know, we celebrate uh, uh, Michael's uh, Father's birthday, Dolores' uh, birthday, and Cesar's birthday, of course, with a lot of music and a lot of food. I mean, it, it, it's been such a, a, a blessing. Uh -huh. but, uh, but before I forget, uh, you know, uh, Diana Montoya, who was the, the leader of the, uh, of the Mujeres who started the Avenida Dolores Huerta, was that Dolores Huerta Avenue was going to be from 8th Street to, um, it's going, it was going to be to 8th Street to uh, uh, Sleda. But she said, no, might as well let's petition the, the uh, county to extend it all the way to 98th Street, which is several miles. So now wow. it, it's, it's, it's called the Avenida Dolores Huerta Byway. It's not Dolores Huerta yet, but it's a, the, oh, the, oh. it continues from Sleda all the way to 98th Street as the Dolores Huerta Byway. And then also, I want to thank her uh, because she got us also involved in celebrating Dolores' um, uh, award by the governor of the uh, state of New Mexico. On, on 2017, a few years, uh, is it 27, no, 20, 2018, uh, the legislature, they flew her in. We had a great, wonderful celebration. Uh, both houses honor her, the house, I mean, the, the house and the Senate and the, and, the, and the governor give her an award. I mean, it was so, so beautiful. And, 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 as, as you were saying, Eduardo, 
this was the first time that this had been done uh, to honor one of, uh, of our national leaders by the state of New Mexico, you know, and even more significant because she is from New Mexico. Uh, so all that was wonderful. And not only that, but the icing of the cake was that, again, the House and the Senate uh, committees passed the uh, Chavez y Chavez state holiday. This time we went with Miguel Garcia, who uh, sponsored the bill. He went with uh, Dennis Chavez, a longtime senator of the state of New Mexico, and Cesar Chavez. So there would be no rejection. So it was called the Chavez y Chavez state holiday. And it passed. But it got stuck on finance. <laughs> It got stuck on the finance committee and the, the yeah. governor was ready to sign it right there when uh, Dolores was present and everything. But we, we have a senator who uh, unfortunately uh, didn't honor, you know, the wishes of the, of the rest of the uh, House members and senators and uh, decided to table that. Uh, and so, so it didn't happen. But we will continue. Uh, uh, we we promised uh, Miguel and, and some other uh, uh, senators and, and House representatives that we will continue uh, pushing for the state holiday uh, in the in the near future. Yeah, if I can make another statement, uh, uh, something that Michael said that this event has become a prime cultural event in, in Albuquerque, uh, in the, in the uh, Chicano community, I have to say that it has become one of the prime cultural events for our community nationwide. People know about it all over the country mm. and comment on it. So that you are to be really congratulated for how you have taken the Cecil Chavez Committee and the celebration uh, of, of Cesar's birthday and now joining it with Dolores. Um, and and uh, you've taken it where we had no idea it could go. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you've done a wonderful, wonderful job. Congratulations, Michael. And, and of course, everybody. Chuy and Pablo and Everybody right. who keeps being involved, uh, it is wonderful. We're way out here in the boonies. Uh, Fred calls it El Fin del Mundo, but <laughs> it's amazing that we can still participate with you and be part of this historic uh, re rem remembrance. Absolutely. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can if this if this uh, pandemic is over. Uh, with uh, uh, next uh, next March, uh, we're going to do everything we can to join you uh, um, because it, 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 this is very critical. This, this re-energizes us uh, in terms of our connection with uh, the committee and with Albuquerque and with all of you folks. Thank, thank you all very much. We also want to thank Linda uh, uh, Hernandez uh, and uh, Valerie St. John and Irma Ruiz for being the co-chairs of this uh, year's event, and 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 the um, and along with uh, Yvonne and Diego, this were their ideas to do this video clips and a little bit of the history uh, in lieu of the celebration. Oh, yeah. This is our way of celebrating this year. So we want to thank them because uh, this. Uh, and another thing, uh, is that Linda and, and Valerie are the cousins of the Lotus Huerta. So they they have a lot of passion for this, uh, uh, you know, that this project. So we want to thank them uh, very, very much. Of course, thank you. For all, uh, Thanks for, indeed. For, for everything. Um, and we'll continue to work, especially um, now um, the uh, farm workers are working tirelessly uh, and the, the pandemic isn't slowing down. 
and they're still putting food on our table. So I think especially now it's important for us to highlight those issues. And definitely uh, part of this day, although it is a celebration, uh, we also want to bring awareness to that. And I know that we will be uh, uh, bringing out some petitions, uh, some boycotts that are going on uh, all around the country uh, to better serve our farm workers and in order to better their conditions. Um, but I think, uh, lastly, I think I, I, I was wondering if uh, you, Michael, or Pablo, or Chuy, if you had anything, uh, anything else to say about, about this movement, about the day of service, and about what it means to, uh, to us doing this now, um, especially uh, in this new format that we're doing. I just, I just have one thing I want to say. Uh, I want to uh, correct a little bit what uh, Lola said a while ago about the, about the, the Cordova sisters. It was not a stance, it was bond. Yeah, yeah I, I, I forgot to mention I forgot to mention that uh, detail. I don't know uh, if it's important for this, but uh, both Nadine and Patsy did come to work with me at Chicago Studies. I, wow. I, had, I had almost forgotten that. Yes, yes. I mean, they were very committed people. Yeah, uh, Rosemary Romero and 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 uh, Cordova, uh, uh, Lucille Cordova, uh, very very instrumental into in all this. But um, you, you know, but I know that um, we you asked us to some, some something to to farther our our committee uh, this year and last year we were able to recruit some students from the high schools to be part of our committee. And that's one of the things that we need. We, we want to pass on the, the, the torch or, you know, uh, help our, our, our future uh, leaders to um, become, to ha get, gain experience by participating uh, in, in, in groups like this. It's, uh, like the uh, Hispanic Heritage Committee. Uh, as Eduardo was saying, there's a lot of experience, there's a lot of guidance that they can, uh, things that they can learn. And, uh, and we wanna really uh, uh, thank, you know, the young people like you, Diego, also, you know, Ivan at the university, uh, but the high schools, the Mecha High School, for example, uh, they've been coming, um, to help us out for the last few years uh, as volunteers for the Marcha and, and Fiesta. Uh, so we need, um, oh, and also a day of service, I think they were part of that too. So we need those young people uh, because you know you never know what can happen to, to some of us, you know, uh, and, and we need to have the next generation prepared. And that's why I thank Pablo and his family for getting involved, because his grandchildren now get, get involved. And, and Michael's uh, 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 children are also getting involved now. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's so so nice to see, you know, a newborn coming toward me. <laughs> and and, and that one is already <laughs> So that's beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so wow. I think, um, like you said, uh, the day of service is the day that I think, uh, to me, was when I got to see the most interaction with families. I thought, I thought it was really cool whenever we got to see the kids and they interact and teach about the history. Uh, that was something that I hadn't experienced uh, as a first-gen college student. So I want to thank you uh, for, for bringing that to me um, in my first year. That's the, like one of the first moments I got involved. And I think uh, that's one of those changes that have happened since the very beginning. So can, can, I, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about how that started, that day of service, and, and why it was included? Um, Michael, I think you talked a little bit about, about that. Yes, as I mentioned, I think there was <clears throat> a sentiment amongst some, some of our uh, volunteers that um, we needed to do more to serve the community outside of the, the fiesta and the marcha. 
And so, um, as Chewy mentioned, uh, La Placita Institute um, uh, and Albino Garcia uh, and um, uh, Saida Namaste, both were really instrumental in getting the day of service off of the ground. It started off as a morning event, literally an hour long event, um, right before the marcha started. And so when we hosted the very first day of service at the historic Sanchez farm uh, in the morning after a blessing and the, getting, the kids getting their hands dirty for an hour or so, we kicked off the march uh, from that location and marched um, uh, along Isleta Boulevard over to the National Hispanic Cultural Center. That event has now grown um, over the years and, um, and uh, it's a, a very sought after event for not only teachers but students, um, uh, young students um, hear about their brother or sister being able to participate in the day of service and they want to do it too. Um, the unfortunate part is that there's limited space uh, at the Sanchez farm, but we regularly fill the space with over 350 students, over 100 volunteers um, for that day long um, uh, of service. And so um, another important component <clears throat> that um, came along with that was um, uh, educational outreach to the schools. I remember a television reporter asking one of the day of service students um, who Cesar Chavez was and why he was important. And the young student, he must have been, I don't know, fifth or sixth grade. Uh, he talked about the, um, the boxer, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Um, and so for me, it clicked that, um, that there needed to be more context before the students actually came to the farm. And so a group of volunteers started a legacy committee, a legacy and educational committee where they began to work with teachers throughout Albuquerque public school system. They developed a curriculum and they would go out and do from presentations to young people to prepare them for the day of service so that they arrived at the Sanchez farm with some context um, about who Cesar was, who Dolores was, why they were important um, and so forth. And, um, and so that, that's become a very uh, important part of the day of service is the edu educational outreach to the schools. Um, the last thing is during the, the, the fiesta itself, um, we started having a, a kid's corner um, because we did want to make this a family friendly event, but we also wanted to continue the educational opportunities for our young people. And so um, while the parents are dancing to, uh, to the music um, or checking out the informational tables uh, from the local nonprofits. Um, um, volunteers work with the kids to produce art and poetry and learn about break dancing and other things like that. So um, um, legacy and, and, and the educational component has become also a big part of the overall festival and celebration. Yes. Yeah, and as part of that, Michael, uh, I remember the we have distributed um, we have distributed uh, hundreds of booklets of those educational booklets that uh, Isaura and Eduardo uh, worked on, and uh, it was produced. That was a, a city project uh, also that the city. Um, uh, uh, when I was working with cultural services, we decided to. Uh, uh, do a, a, a run of the print of printed print of the booklet. That's the one that we've been using to uh, give to the schools as well, teachers and all that. To uh, uh, it's a learning uh, introduction to uh, Cesar, the life of Cesar, and and and, and, uh, and and Dolores. It's a chronological history. So you know, I think we 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 are uh, due to. Uh, we we want to have to print some some uh, some more uh, booklets because I think we're running. In addition to that, uh, Diego, there we supported uh, for a few years the uh, two Cesar Chavez Learning Centers that are here in in Albuquerque. Uh, John San, uh, John Chavez, 
uh, uh, one of our uh, also former members uh, uh, started as a, uh, he was a board member of those uh, learning centers that were supported by the, the uh, Cesar Chavez Foundation. And we used to do a fundraiser here. So there's a couple of those that uh, still exist. As far as I know, they, uh, it, it, cha it changes every year because they're done, they're run by volunteers, VISTA volunteers and, uh, and uh, uh, the um, job board volunteers and some other, um, some other uh, young people. Uh, so uh, they're still uh, operating, although at a, at a very minimum capacity, but back in those days, uh, they used to have a lot of programs in the, in the afternoons or after school program uh, um, centers. And those, we, we were also uh, uh, part of that for, for a while. We used to do a huge fundraiser to raise funds to uh, continue supporting those, those learning centers. Absolutely. I, I remember uh, back when I started uh, volunteering uh, at UNM for Farm Worker Awareness Week, I got to uh, be one of the groups that went to the elementary schools and taught about uh, Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez prior to, to the event. Uh, right. I don't know if you guys, uh, if I've told this story, but uh, before um, that day, I was in school for uh, nuclear medicine. And once I had that lesson, I changed my, my major immediately to elementary education because I just fell in love with that classroom in particular. Oh, wow. And that's kind of like what's driven me. And that's absolutely uh, the day of service has a clear connection to my future. Um, so absolutely, uh, you all uh, have, uh, have placed steps uh, on my path and it definitely like inspires me to continue uh, forward from uh, the movements that you have all started to what Michael developed. So thank you, thank you all for everything. Amen. Amazing story. Yeah. I want to, yes, in, in ta your uh, idea of going back to changing your major to elementary education is a very, very important one. Uh, because once the booklet that uh, Chewy produced for us on the Cesar Chavez came out and it was uh, distributed to the schools. I got to uh, invite it to one of the first grade, uh, uh, the teacher invited me and I wish I could remember her name, but she did a wonderful lesson on Cesar Chavez to the first graders. And then they uh, cut out and she had some of the eagles already cut out, but they made little flags. And then they were so uh, attentive, so, um, immersed in their the, the lesson and it was just wonderful to see these first graders just soaking it up and Absolutely. you get together with other elementary teachers and develop curriculum you know, for each different grade level on how to present talk about Tessa Chavez and Dolores Huerta. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know that uh, Clarita Sandoval, uh, Arturo uh, Sandoval's wife, also develops a curriculum over at uh, Longfellow Elementary School. And she used to teach this. Uh, and she actually did a play for the National Bilingual Educational Conference. And, and it was wonderful because I, could, I, I still see some of that. Uh, 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 people still remember uh, that play. And this was way back, you know, when. Uh, when when the uh, the booklet was developed, so so there's you know there's been so many so many people that get inspired like like you said Diego, it's so important especially I mean you um, you are are going to uh, continue the legacy of all those you know people uh, like Pablo and 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 Michael myself and Sar and Eduardo. It's it's exciting to see that. You know, and I want to commend you for continuing this. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. It's, it's an honor uh, to be, um, well, to talk with you all and learn a little, like get a, a more inside look uh, to how everything's uh, started and why we have the day of service, how it, it progressed, uh, kind of why it started here at UNM. Uh, the, the movement that the Recuerda Cesar Chavez Committee uh, uh, represents is, is huge. It's one that's not dying. 
the farm workers need our help still now. Um, so thank you, thank you all. We, we have we have our final statement. Yeah, let's do all of us together a little uh, exercise in uh, in, in, uh, in uh, remembering Cesar uh, presente as they do in Latin America when some one dies in the in battle and loses their lives the rest of the the, the force will, when they call out the when they do the roll call everybody answers for cesar okay. so it's going up like this cesar chavez cesar chavez Cesar Chavez! Presente! Presente! Thank you guys. Uh, thank you all. Muchas gracias, uh, corazón, uh, for taking a little bit of time on your, your evening uh, to talk to, to talk just together, to reminisce, and to me to learn. Uh, to learn about the battles you fought and I think to uh, hopefully once we share this story to the public to encourage more minds to, to continue this, uh, this movement. Thank you. Thank you so much everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Bye. Bye. Que les vaya bien, adiós. Igualmente. Hasta la próxima. Hasta la próxima. Hasta las otras piscas. <risa> Hasta las otras piscas, Israel. Las piscas de algodón.